on the right side. So you can't really say that something physical or tangible is something that um, purely exists because some people obviously can see things and then they think they are touching something, but it's not actually visibly there. So the, it's again relating to concept. How do we conceptualize something? Would it be more the observer, like, if your brain is giving you the signals that there is something there, then for you that is reality, where for others it may not be. So it goes back to what is real, it depends on who you are and how you observe the world. And god damn, it's all relative. <laughs> stupid word. It's the stupidest word. It's this, like, it you can't have a real answer if everything is all relative and it's like based on who has who, like, give me a real answer. <laughs> but there isn't one if everybody has different perspectives and experiences. Yeah, I mean, and to go on. Yeah, sorry. No, 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 go, no, go, go on, Kyra. Go on, Kyra. Thank you. Um, to go on what Harris said, I would say that people with phobias and people who are in escape rooms, that really popped up to me, when they feel something, that is their reality. And people with phobia as well. I know a lot of people around here, because there's a lot of earthquakes, are afraid to go into buildings. And for them, going into that building is fear. It arouses fear in them. And Schachter and Singer, I think it was 1963, two psychologists, Jude already knows because she studied it. But this is an incredible study. It's found that emotion isn't only emotion as we see it, but it's a physiological response and a psychological cognitive label coming together. So we might first feel your heart beating, a bit of adrenaline, pupils dilating, and then your body will try to find a reason for this. And it'll go up to your mind, pull out fear, put those two and two together, and you will have your emotion. So I think that really answers Harris's also talk about reality, and it is relative. It's how we feel, what we think, and how we really put two and two together. I think it's, just, it's such an interesting route that we've taken isn't it? And um, it's really fascinating to me that we're talking very much about physiological response to things. And mm. so I am, I am so grateful for for these chances to connect and and where I am to be able to be performing on stages again. Um, and so I just love to to share two more poems with you. Uh, and this next poem for me is is just a celebration of of being able to do what I do. It's one of my favourite poems that I've written, uh, and it's also it feels like a, a happy poem to go to because. Whenever I'm performing or traveling, or if I don't know who I'm going to be in front of, uh, I always go for this poem because I think it's a love poem. And we can all get behind love, but also I wanted it to be cool. So I put dinosaurs in it. Uh, and I think that wherever you are, we can all agree that dinosaurs are really cool. Um, so this poem is called Dinosaur Love, and it goes like this. I want to say I love you. But it seems it's not enough. Because when people say I love you, it can mean a lot of stuff like I'll always have your back or I'm glad I'm not alone. Or to be honest, I'd say anything. So you'll hang up the phone because I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. And these Doctor Who box sets ain't going to watch themselves. I want to say I love you, but it seems it's not enough because when people say I love you, it can mean a lot of stuff. And what I'm really trying to say is. <laughs> to love you like a t-rex with a tiny brain but a massive heart and if i was a t-rex i could hold you in those t-rex arms in from my heart because that's dinosaur love it's the way that you send spines down my spine like a stegosaurus or how just like dinosaurs no one cares what came before us because i got that love so big it cannot be ignored like if you were the dinosaur Everything else seems secondary. Dinosaurs are not mythical creatures. They are legendary. Plus, they're just really cool. I mean, the thing with dinosaurs is dinosaurs are kind of awesome. Why don't they actually exist? Just my love is real. I ain't talking blindly walking strings attached like Theseus. That's Minotaur love. When this is dinosaur love, this ain't no damsel in distress. Trap princess, dragon slaying quest. Because one, dragons never happens. Two, most women don't need rescuing. Sort of feminist dinosaurs. This is less prancing unicorns, more two ton triceratops or terrifying pterodactyls tearing terror from above. It's dinosaur love, molten rock and meteoric. Trust me, got love so old school, it's prehistoric. So if you're into Spielberg, 
or hip hop with a classic vibe, then we could watch Jurassic Park or listen to Jurassic Five. And if you like a bone, then I know a place where we could see him. I'm a lifetime member of the Natural History Museum. I want to say I love you, but that might be awkward. So instead, I'm happy to let that stay in my head where it could not go wrong. And if, as time goes on, my Dino love dies out, as you'd expect when it's extinct, rather that we remain friends than became exes. But if, somehow, against the odds, my Dino love proves so colossal that it stands the test of time, perfectly preserved like a fossil, then one day, when you've been left in ruins, I need someone to help excavate through them. It won't take an archaeological expert to point you towards me. Now, at that point, I will point out, you're like a Brachiosaurus. So there's no one above you. Then I'll be able to look you in the eyes and say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you think then if we go up our scale? We've got me and Kanta, which you could also use a heart to describe. Uh, Adeline. Adeline. I love. I love. Yes, perfect. So we're going. Yeah, we're going up with our numbers of happy faces. The more happy faces, that the more we like this thing. So me gusta. I like. Me gusta mucho. I like it a lot. And, and me encanta. I love. Okay, let's put that in there for you. 